Why you girls didn't tell me Hanky the Turd from South Park evolved into Kodak Black? <laughs> So what do we have here? Another black man that says they don't want to date black girls. Like, we've all heard it before. Um, Kodak Black recently, not too long ago, I think was it, what, like five days ago, on his Instagram live said, I don't, you know, I don't date black girls, I don't. Considering that Kodak Black is the blackest he blackity blackity black, 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 and he says he doesn't date black girls. And his mother is black. I think his mother is Haitian or something. What is wrong with you black men when you all get to some type of celebrity status that y'all just, just disown black women? Women who have birthed you all in this world, who have protected you, have taught you, have raised you. What, I, I just, I want to understand what bump in the road with your life being trash have you ran into and spilled trash all on the freeway? What part did you hit this curb and say, I don't want to date black women after being surrounded around black women who have been there for you? That, that's something I, I just don't understand. Even for me, for being a black gay man, and I don't find myself sexually attracted to women, I always say if I was heterosexual child, I would have be a strong black woman and some beautiful black kids, okay? That's about the only thing that I envy about, just about being heterosexual. So I'm like, girl, well, I can still have a family, but you know, just black women are beautiful and I just don't understand how someone that looks like you, talks like you, and birthed you in this world, how are you not attracted to them? Like, what do you, like, what type of anti-blackness, blackity, blackity, black type of behavior is that? And where do you bump into that while you doing whatever you're doing with your celebrityism or something? Like, what, what happens? I, I'm, I'm so confused even talking about it because this man said this and you said this and you have a black mother like i don't understand it so what happened i want to when me and black men say stuff like that i want to interview them and find out i actually don't want to drag them in person i want to interview them and find out what it is so we can fix it is it something in the dna that we need to eradicate or something there's some type of brain dead cancer or something that is killing our black men once they become celebrities that they just think that they're not supposed to date black women no more like, do you all just step on black women and once you get to um, a certain status, you don't want to be surrounded with them because you might be looked at as less than? Like, what is it that's causing you all not to be attracted to black women? I don't understand this anti-black behavior and the more I think about it, the more irritated I become. Oh, that black was on his Instagram after that and went off about three minutes. He was on Instagram live and he said, you know, people asked him questions, he said he don't date black women. And we get this time and time again. You all remember Tracy from the show Step It Up. She put up something on her Facebook and she was just talking about, you know, as we watched the BET Awards this past weekend, how she did not see a lot of black dancers. And I've listened to her, you know, steady preach about being a dark-skinned woman and dancing and how that she had went on video shoots. And, you know, people have told her, like, girl, I'm not interested in having her because she's, you know, she's black. I want some form and stuff. And it's, we have to do something to eradicate this type of behavior because it's truly anti and it really hurts black people to hate and hurts black kids. I remember me growing up, you know, I had family members who considered light-skinned people are beautiful or more attractive and stuff. And I grew up thinking that I was supposed to, you know, only talk to light-skinned girls. And I felt like I wasn't attractive, um, considered being dark-skinned. And that's something I grew out of. But just imagine the people who like Kodak Black, who continuously can carry this hate, hatred you know, type of behavior with them. So we have to have conversations about colorism on both sides, um, with dark-skinned people, with light-skinned people, and with biracial people. We have to have conversations like this. And it's, it's trash. I've heard several of my supporters say, you know, um, they were treated differently because they were biracial or something and they didn't understand it. So I want y'all to share some of those stories so we can truly talk about it and have a conversation. Now, as you all know, this is another King of Reeves TV video on this Thursday afternoon, this evening, whatever time y'all are getting it. I love you all so much what's going on last week. You know, girl, I had a flat tire and then a flat tire was on the donut. Girl, my credit card was um, charged $700 in Redbox, honey. One of the girls got a hold to my information, so I'm gonna have to stop, um, I guess, you know, using my card at gas stations or something. But my friend Miss Kelly, Miss Kelly, I love you so much, um, said that somebody had charged some um, plane tickets on her card, and she doesn't even use her card like that. So, you know, I don't know, girl, this, this is a new day and age, but the girls are scamming and doing stuff. Luckily, USAA, shout out to them, commercial for them, you know, said, girl, somebody charges a Redbox DVDs. I haven't went to the Redbox and God knows when, okay? When I do, I go to PayPal. I use my PayPal card. 
to get Redbox DVDs. Girl, I do not use my main stuff. I don't need y'all charging stuff unnecessary, honey. Charge it to Miss PayPal because they can, you know, I can block this stuff, but I don't need y'all accessing to the coins and Miss and Miss um, USAA. So this week for me was such an affirming week. So this week was such an enlightening period for me. Um, as you all know who watched Wasted Wednesday, I spoke to someone who works for a major network and was interested in my voice and me doing stuff and working on projects and stuff and shooting stuff to them and possibly even interested in me being a reality show. They put out so much information. We had a call, we had a phone conversation for about 40 minutes. If you're watching this, I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for calling me and emailing me. She emailed me back in April, y'all. She emailed me back in April and she was just, you know, saying that she was interested in working with me on projects and stuff and possibly even a reality show girl I'm going to keep y'all up to date on that tea I'll let y'all know how that stuff goes girl we going I, I can't be promising no stuff but we'll keep I'll keep y'all up to date and let y'all know what the tea is I can't be putting out all the stuff out until I know because y'all ain't gonna have me embarrassed on I ain't gonna be telling y'all there's some stuff going on and I don't deliver why are we talking let's talk about Migos and Joe Bud oh the BET Awards were this past weekend, and Migos were doing an interview with um, Joe Budden, DJ Academics, I think, and some other woman, I can't think of her name, for um, a podcast or something, or whatever they got going on. They asked, I think it was Offset, they asked him the question, like, Offset, you know, you were left on bad and bougie, like, what's the tea with that? Like, girl, y'all continuously ask this man this question about, was he left on bad and bougie? How many times y'all gonna ask this question? And people say that Offset does not speak, he kind of mumbles a little bit. But if you are a true fan, you know how he is, you know what he's saying. So it seems like the DJ Academics were trying to be funny and trying to be shady, but Ashton say, what? What you saying? What's going on? And they put the nigga what meme on him, and it was hilarious. DJ Academics, I'm not taking your apology, girl. I think that you were doing it to be petty. I think you were trying to really get at them. And it was really, it was uncalled for. And Migos got up and they were like the Wonder Twins plus one, okay? They got up like the Avengers. Do you hear me? They got up. Joe Budden got up and walked off, and it was so disrespectful. And shout out to the um, woman who was sitting next to Joe Budden who kept a, you know, a face and was like, you know, girl, can let me keep this interview going. Joe Budden got up and dropped the mic. That was so disrespectful. Joe Budden, you you are the trash, 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 trash of anybody. I can't wait to, you know, you just fall off. Because, girl, you like a poor version of Charlemagne the God. You will never be... Girl, you always angry at somebody. I'm gonna get Joe Budden a Snickers, okay? Somebody said if you give Joe Budden a Snicker, girl, he gonna turn into Carmen. I holler. He'll turn into Carmen with some good skin. Every time you turn around and ain't and be angry like that, Joe Budden, you'll more your skin wrinkles and start to fade, okay? But the Migos got up, them some real dudes. Them some real dudes that got up in, in, in Z formation. Do you hear me? And they were ready to attack. Oh, I wanted to see it. They was not playing. I'm not gonna let my cousin get jumped, okay? I ain't gonna let that happen. Not today. Not on my watch. Let's talk about Kim Kardashian because I've been ready to tug on her wig for a quick second, okay? Kim Kardashian did a little apology on Twitter for to Jackie. Um, Y'all know Jackie, the wonderful, successful um, YouTuber who does, well, she's not a YouTuber girl. She's a brand extraordinaire. Um, she does makeup tutorials and stuff, and she just shows us a little bit of her life, and she has a sickening fine ass husband, I'm not think about it. And she just full of like positive energy and I like watching her videos. I, I don't even, not interested in like makeup like that, but I think the first person I was watching doing makeup was he flawless. And then one of my close friends, her daughter does makeup too, and she's like 14 years old. I'm gonna give her information too, cause she's good for y'all if y'all got some kids. Um, I'm gonna give y'all her channel as well. But I was watching Jackie's video and it's just, you know, her talking and stuff. So I kind of just, you know, grew a liking to her. Um, and I've seen her before, before like, before like a year ago, I've like been paying attention to her. So, she, you know, Kim Kardashian had this little, y'all know Kim Kardashian had this little makeup lunch thing. She invited people to her house. So Jackie was one of the people that was invited. And Jackie got there and, you know, she took pictures and whatever. And she did a review like the next day or whatever and she put it up. And she kind of, you know, was just honest about how she felt about the pricing of Kim Kardashian's makeup and, you know, how much product he was giving. She was just, you know, being honest about some of the stuff. And I can appreciate that because I can only imagine how many people send Jackie stuff and say, girl, we'll give you this amount of money to talk about our project in a good light. And it's like, girl, I don't want to do that. That's the same thing with y'all be following these Instagram folks and they be around here putting up, um, these long forgiveness um, ass and stuff. I would never put anything to my subscribers, to my followers, to my supporters, and it's some fraudulent type of stuff. I would never give y'all something just because the coin is cute. It's just, it don't work like that. It's a lot of stuff that be offered to me, like talk about this. I'm not gonna do that. If it does not align with my brand and I don't feel comfortable with it, I'm not gonna talk about it to y'all. I'm not gonna tell you about it. And I don't wanna be a social because at the end of the day, 
it is about the coin, but at the same time, it's about the commitment and me just being truthful to my to my audience. I can't sit up here and tell y'all to support some stuff that I know I'm not going to buy. Okay, I don't want to ever have that relationship with anybody um, who watches me. Like, I don't want to do, do that. The coin ain't sitting. Girl, she might be cute for the minute, but these people trust my insight on stuff. And I can't be sitting here telling them, oh, girl, do this, and they're going to forgive your loan. And then these folks getting scammed out of money. Girl, no, ma'am, I'm not doing that. So, back to the story. Jackie was not tagged when um, Kim Kardashian put the pictures up on her Instagram. Jackie was the only person that was not tagged. The only person. Now... They called out Kim Kardashian that weekend and said, girl, where's Jackie? They tagged her, tagged her, tagged her. Kim Kardashian didn't respond to Wednesday. Girl, you waited a whole four or five business days later. Who you think you is? Nicki Minaj responded to rap beef. Like, girl, get you some business. Like, Kim Kardashian, for somebody who has made their living off of social media and has their audience where, girl, people pay you money to, to talk about brands and to share products and stuff, you pay attention to your social media. If you're not paying attention to your social media, you have people who are paying attention to it. So you mean to tell me nobody caught that? Nobody saw that? Girl, you are a lie. You are a lie, a lie, girl. I sound like that dude who hollered at Obama doing his um, State of the Union. A lie. You lie. Kim Kardashian, I just don't believe you, and I just don't trust y'all. And somebody said on, on my uh, Wasted Wednesday last night, black folks shouldn't trust anything to start with two Ks. Because <laughs> nine times out of ten, it's going to be the Ku Klux Klan, okay? That was disrespectful to Jackie, and then you put up these tweets and stuff and say, oh, girl, you know, I put it up, but I couldn't tag her after it. Kim Kardashian, I don't even believe you were the one that even put it up. I don't believe that you put those pictures up. Like, girl, you got so much stuff going on, Kim Kardashian. I don't believe it. And that is a sorry apology. You need to do something. You need to do an interview or something with her. You need to do something like, considering what you have done to Kanye West and some of the things that you have said and alluded to, Girl, you, you, your image is not cute with us. Like, we don't trust you. We don't trust the Kardashians, girl. I don't trust y'all like that, okay? You got Chloe that's sitting here and sucked the life out of Lamar Odom, and he buried around here getting around. Thank God I watched this interview with um, Wendy Williams. Y'all can say what y'all want about Wendy Williams, but Wendy Williams was about to cry when she was talking to Lamar Odom because she looked at him, and she saw her old self when she was on drugs and stuff. Let me tell you something. Drug addiction is something serious. Even though we listen to it on music and stuff, popping pills and all that type of stuff girl find another way to deal with depression anxiety all that even for me my drug of choice is food when i'm depressed and i'm feeling it girl i will grab a cheeseburger i will grab some taco bell in a minute and i'll be eating it and what it does is it makes me gain weight and considering that i'm not working like i used to like i'm not as active and i work at home it makes me gain weight it makes me feel um, unattractive sometimes so you know we got to work on that. We have to find other ways to deal with depression and all types of stuff. Like, we can't be relying on drugs and stuff in addition. We can't let stuff get the best of us. And I'm not telling everybody to drink water and mind your business like my guy Terry be doing sometimes. But truly, drink water. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. Because seeing Lamar Odom interview with Kim Kardashian was very sad. It looked like he had a lot to say, but he, didn't, he wasn't able to get it all out. And Lamar Odom needs to be drinking water. It just goes to show you it goes to show you that even money, like there's people who got money, like you're going to always want something. It doesn't matter what it is, you're going to always be hungry for something else. It's not good enough. Like Lamar Odom has all these coins, all these championship rings and stuff, but he's sitting here dealing with drug abuse. Like, why is that? Like, and we got people like myself that's sitting here dealing with financial stuff and girls sitting here staying in a damn tote to note apartment until their credit get good. Okay, like I'm dealing with financial stuff. He's dealing with like we like it's almost like girl I wish I had the stuff that you had and I bet you wish you had the stuff I had like to be you know able body and mind and not be addicted to drugs and stuff and feel like you have to rely on that. But Lamar Odom did say the Kim Kardashians don't have a curse on them. They just deal with a lot and he said the reason why they're able to deal with it is because they're women. Now I'll give him a little bit on that but I just think that they just like to they're culture vultures like they suck the culture out of stuff and they make money off of it and Lamar Odom was one of the products off of that like he was one of the you know disposed of individuals from that um, Lamar Odom your interview was cute I thought it was you know to the point I feel like it could have been a little bit longer um, and I felt like the audience made you nervous and stuff but overall you all need to watch that interview I think I'll put it on kingofreach.com um, because that interview with Wendy Williams open insight on people who are struggling with drug abuse and you all know opioid addiction is very uh, rampant in the um, 
in, in, in the United States. Like, girl, we can say that, the, the, you know, the, the Joanne and the Scammers be doing it, but it's some black folks out here, you know, suffering from that stuff too, girl. Since I moved to Atlanta, I've never seen people do that until I got here. And, you know, when I see people, you know, put their little Peru, what Wendy Williams call it, in their nose, it just makes me, it just, I don't know, it's just something I've not never been interested in. I've talked to some folks who have done the acts. You know, the only thing I've ever done is probably some some uh, wee brownie here and there, and girl, that was a horrible experience for me, child. I, I, Lord, I damn it, went into a coma from that, and that was horrible. I'm gonna give y'all a story time on that. But, um, yeah, we have to talk to our, we gotta talk to our folks. You know, I know Matt is um, going, She's growing in the LGBT community, um, and that's the purpose of me and Adrian's from top to bottom um, conversation that we're having this Saturday at the Hangout. Um, you all check that out. Here's the flyer for that. Check it out. Hope to see y'all this Saturday it's in Atlanta, Georgia. It does not matter if you're black, gay, straight, bisexual, um, transgender, DL, man. We want you all to come out here. This is stuff for the community. We're trying to do stuff for the community. Like, I just can't be right here in front of this camera telling y'all what the tea is. I have to actually be out here to touch people and say, you know, it's going to be good. And to meet some of the people who support us all the time. So I'm looking forward to seeing you all this Saturday. So y'all come out and support. But Lamar Odom, I hope he gets it together. I hope he focuses on him. He said, you know, his relationship with his children changed and he lost time with them. Um, I can see that, you know, he said he got out and he had to learn to walk again, all that type of stuff. It was sad. Um, it was it was kind of tragic watching that. I mean, he looked like he needed some water and some lip chap, okay? Wendy Williams was about to cry up. I ain't never seen Wendy cry. And, you know, when they were talking about the Kardashians, it made me also think about this um, article that was written today that was talking about pretty privilege and stuff. And Wendy had made a comment about um, Chloe's new body and stuff. And, 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 uh, um, and Lamar had said, you know, she's always been beautiful to me. And I think that's important because the more we pressure people on body image and to look like this and to be thin and fix this and that, we stress people out. This environment, this world, I'm telling you something, you walking every day existing, Girl, you already doing more than anybody else, okay? Because, girl, this world is stressful, girl. It's, there's so many times that I've said, girl, I've had enough. Suck on my, I almost said, girl, I've had enough of this. Let me just lay down, honey, I'm tired. And I'm pretty sure we all have moments like that. You know, it's just, it's a lot of pressure that we put on people 24 seven. Look like this, be like this, make this money, go to school, do this, make this. Uh, be able to survive, be able to like, girl, it's a lot. It's a lot, I'm just like, girl, did, were we really asked to do this? Is this my my goal to actually be on this planet? It's just to be working all the time and paying bills and paying debts. Can you, with your raggedy, broke ass, <laughs> okay? I'm like, girl, it, that's how I'm feeling. Like, is this all that we have to offer here? We're talking about anti-blackness. I have to stop and talk about Jocelyn comment that she made towards um, Savannah Stevie J's daughter. That was completely out of line, Jocelyn. I'm normally here for you 100%, but that was a, you know, somebody, you know, that's everybody's child. Everybody's somebody's child, but you know, that was a little too much. That you call her nappy headed. So it's just like, girl, I, when you said that, it made me feel a certain type of way. Cause I'm like, Jocelyn, girl, what are you trying to say? Like. Is that supposed to be an insult? Like, I have no problems with the word nappy, but when you're using it in a derogatory term, I'm a little like, girl, what's the tea? Like, what are you trying to say, Jocelyn? Like, girl, you want everybody to be pumping, uh, fix a flat and tie grit and all that type of stuff inside our bodies and stuff to look like you and be right here strung out and shit and rapping and stuff and not knowing what's going on and eyes dilated? Girl, go find you some business, Jocelyn. Like, that was out of line. So it makes me think about you like as a show that has been prospering because black people have been watching it and you sit up here saying some anti-black stuff. Jocelyn, girl, that was not the look. You need to, you owe that girl an apology. Um, you owe an apology for your, how, okay? You owe an apology because Jocelyn, that was completely out of line. Girl, you blocked me, but I got other Twitter accounts, okay? I got two more, honey. I got For the Culture and I got King of Reeves, okay? I'm going to have to drag you on there because, girl, that was out of line. Out of line. Too much. Like, what did y'all think about that? Did y'all think that y'all, when y'all saw that, did y'all was like, girl, Jocelyn, what's the tea? What you, what you doing, sis? What you doing? Rihanna got a new man. Girl, who cares? Rihanna got a new man. Child, the black man said, oh, she can't handle no black man. Girl, somebody said, y'all can't swim, honey. Ain't nobody interested in some of y'all trash sales, but it's just not going to say that all black men are trash. But like I hate to say, it sound like I'm talking about police officers. Not all y'all are bad, but um, Rihanna got a new man, and girl, they saying that this um, Naomi Campbell's um old boo thing. So girl, Rihanna, don't tell me you one of those, sis. Girl, it's some love at first night tease. Oh, and love at first night come out tomorrow, honey. Love at first night, honey. Get web series that I interviewed that you all loved is out. 
tomorrow. Check it out on Slate TV. I'm gonna put the link out for it, honey. She's gonna be on YouTube as well, honey. Y'all check it out. It's gonna be it's 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 lit, okay? It's lit, okay? Girl, I'm starting to sound like the BET or what? It's lit, it's lit, it's lit, it's lit. Kind of girl, if you are sleeping with that woman's man, girl, even if it is an ex, I hope you ain't one of those friends, sis. Like, girl, I had to readjust my wig. Like, Rihanna, girl, that's out of line. Say he is the Saudi Toyota heir, honey. His name is Hassan Jamil. Ooh. Now, he's cute or whatever, but Rihanna, girl, like, I'm a little disappointed. Like, they said it might be a little, little feud or something going on, like a little beef. Because Naomi Campbell, girl, she going to throw a phone at you. Girl. Rihanna is having a fun time. She's unapologetic. Y'all know that's her brand. She really don't care. She's going to do whatever she want to do. That's just Rihanna. So, I don't know why we're surprised that she's screwing somebody else's old boo thing. Like, girl, even though we friends, girl, um, homeboy peen was good. So, I'm just going to grab on it and jump on it, girl. But I don't think Rihanna can twerk anyway, considering that trash video that she gave us. Serena Williams debuted some baby pictures, and the girls were pressed about it. They said, you know, oh, girl, the white meal, they was upset. They were just like, you know, what she's doing? And they compared her to other things. I was just like, girl, that's a reach. Serena Williams, you looked beautiful, girl. Congratulations on you and your pregnancy. Sickening, thick, cornbread fed black woman. I'm here for, I don't care who you married to, honey. Get them shmoney, get this shmoney. Back on Schmoney, I still think that uh, Cardi B should have won that award, not Remy Ma, but that's a whole nother story, okay? Girl, speaking of that, did y'all see Nicki Minaj's performance at the NBA Awards? Girl, she was around here twirling around. Girl, your performance in front of that plane, this is how, hey, go to prom. And you spin around in fires and stuff, girl, that was more sickening than what you did. She was trying to give us some Sasha Fusion, she ended up giving us Sasha Flop. But this was another cute episode of Kingaree's TV. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Remember that I do Wasted Wednesday, every Wednesday, a couple of church announcements for the girls and the boys and everybody under the sun. I will be hosting a competition September the 30th in Florida. Here's the flyer, y'all. Make sure y'all check it out. How do y'all support? They are raising money. I'm raising awareness about um, autism and stuff. So it's a beneficial type of um, dance competition. So if you're interested, purchase tickets. Email me if you know somebody that's dancing and they don't know how to coach. Email me so I can put you with the right people so you can participate. We're doing stuff for the culture for the black folks for everybody. So y'all make sure y'all check it out. Also, I'm still looking for content contributors on kingarees.com. You can email me at justin at King Com. Email me, let me know, call me, beat me if you want to reach me, honey. And the contributors that I already have right now have been noticed by this woman who called me um, from a network. So she was looking at the people that I was surrounded with. So, you know, y'all better get with this stuff, honey. Come on, we finna put, I'm gonna put everybody on game. I'm putting everybody on game. Everybody that's interested in the book club, honey, you might want to join. We'll get the link for that as well. We will be doing our wrap-up live feed on that this Saturday. Cannot wait. I love y'all. Y'all have a wonderful evening. Y'all enjoy yourself. And this is how bad bitch do videos and leave.